Well, good afternoon, everybody. Uh, today we're joined with, uh, by Jason Sheraton of Thrive Technologies. Jason <clears throat> is going to let us know what his company can assist us with as we move to the virtual world. The internet is what's keeping a lot of the country moving forward, and cloud computing has greatly assisted with that. So, Jason, take it away. All right. Thanks, Bill. Um, yeah, I think the great point, right? Cloud computing is, is definitely um, uh, not only uh, in this day and age that we live in now uh, taken off, but, uh, you know, really for us, it's been a uh, sort of a cloud first mentality uh, for, for almost the past 10 years. And uh, really, that's really coming into, um, you know, full picture right now with everything that we've got going on with the pandemic and certainly, um, you know, everything that's kind of happening here today. So, uh, you know, today we just figured we'd talk a little bit about um, how uh, really uh, businesses are leveraging that virtual world. Um, you know, we can talk through uh, a few scenarios here um, uh, this afternoon about, you know, how and, and what people are using. I, I actually even have uh, some of this, we can give a little demo uh, about okay. how people are accessing um, the uh, virtual desktop as, as it's called or the desktop as a service, um, and uh, to really show people uh, the power uh, of what's out on the cloud uh, and how that can help sort of your daily lives. So, okay. Yeah. Are we ready to? Uh, well, as far as, could you just tell me a little bit about the difference between going on the cloud and using a VPN? Yeah. Which I'm not sure that I really understand the difference. Maybe you can help explain that. Yeah, no, that, that, that's a great question. You know, a lot of um, folks are used to VPN, right? And typically the VPN would stem from uh, being um, sort of um, remote uh, and accessing your office, you know? And really at the end of the day, that technology has, has been around forever. People still use VPNs all the time. Um, but uh, in a lot of cases uh, for, I think the, the small, to medium-sized businesses, and when I say small to medium, I'm talking probably under 25 people. Um, really, the need for having to set up a server, having to uh, set up VPNs, um, are really a thing of the past. Um, really, what the, the the cloud has evolved into is taking your servers in your VPNs and sticking it all in one spot, so that when you are working from your office or you are working from home, or you're working from your beach house, or you're on the road. Uh, maybe not so much these days on the road, but you get my point that no matter where you're going or what um, you know, platform you're running, you know, maybe at, in the office you're running a Windows machine, maybe at home you're running a Mac, uh, and maybe you know, when you travel you've got a Chromebook or an iPad. The really nice thing about what the cloud is doing for people today, it is allowing you to access 100% of all of your data, all of your applications through any one of those vehicles. So if you really, you know, I talk about this all the time with people, it's that technology pendulum, right? Most of us uh, are, you know, know about mainframe computers and dumb terminals. Well, right. it's really the evolution of high-speed internet that is really bridging the gap between um, bringing that full circle, right? It is allowing people to connect at much higher speeds and therefore access a data center now. And the big data centers that people probably can relate to, Microsoft and their Azure data center, uh, AWS, um, you know, Amazon's AWS data centers, uh, Google has their data centers, which is called Google, Google Cloud Platform. So those are, again, big name companies that I think everybody can recognize. And that's what we're talking about. We're talking about putting those services into data centers so that when you access your computer, your server, your applications, your files and folders, um, you're accessing that all at the data center. Your computer or your iPad um, or your Samsung tablet uh, all become really a dumb term terminal, right? It's, it's a lot more fancy, uh, but at the end of the day, um, that dumb terminal allows you a window 
into completing your work on a day-to-day -day basis. Okay. Now, do um, VPNs and the cloud provide the same level of security for data? Because, you know, with the accounting profession, we have everybody's names, addresses, social security numbers. I mean, we, we've got it all. Yep. And um, I just want to make sure that it would be secure. Absolutely. And um, I'll, again, when we get to the end of this, I'll just show everybody a quick, you know, literally two minute demo uh, about how that works. But everybody that logs into the data centers, um, whether, and it really doesn't matter what um, cloud platform you're running, right? Thrive has its own data centers. Um, we work a lot, obviously, with Microsoft and Azure and their data centers. Uh, same with the other big folks that are out there. Uh, but everybody's required to have minimum security um, levels that we need to achieve. And so some of those uh, minimum levels uh, are going to be like, for example, two-factor authentication, right? And what do I mean by two-factor or multi-factor authentication? It's um, if you've ever used something on your bank, right? It's the same thing. You get uh, a username and password, and then there's got to be an acknowledgement in the back end. It's either got to come through uh, on an email, it's got to come through on a cell phone, it's got to come through with a text message, or even in some cases, a phone call to verify that you, uh, Bill, logging into the system is the same guy that's accessing the cloud. And so initially out of the gate, you know, we're, we're really mitigating our risk just by having those couple pieces in place. Beyond that, each data center carries industry standards and certifications that they hold. Each are a little bit different, but you'll hear terms such as SSAE and SOC certifications that they all carry in order to keep your data uh, safe, both at transit and at rest. And so um, I won't bore everybody with those details, but um, you know, a couple of those acronyms are what people uh, look for for security standards, and that's um, you know typical for all of these data centers. Okay. Um, so, um, boy, I have a question written down here. Um, the information that gets transferred from. Um, say my office, my dumb terminal to the cloud, that you're saying it's secure while it's being transmitted. And then when it gets to the other end, it's encrypted or whatever at the other end to lock it down so it's secure over that type play? Yeah, so um, think about it this way too. When um, some of the solutions, and again, um, one of the solutions that um, several of the MSATP members uh, use is called, um, it's called DAS, Desktop as a Service. And mm -hmm. it's really your desktop that sits out in the cloud. So the data that goes between your desktop and the server in the data center, they're uh -huh. all sitting in the same place. So you're not actually transferring data from your laptop to the data center. Um, when you do that action, there are um, uh, security standards that additional layers that need to be put in place. But the reality is for you to complete your day-to-day -day job, you never have to transfer data from your laptop to the data center. Because when you log into that desktop in that virtual the desktop as a service, uh, you are simply using the data center 100% of the time. You're looking at the screen. And if you move a file within that desktop, it's actually all being done in the data center. So the nice ah. thing is, is it's a really complete solution um, at the end of the day, if this computer blows up today, I can go grab another computer and in five minutes, I'll be right back working to where I left off. And that's gotcha. really what I mean by the dumb terminal in the mainframe, right? The dumb terminal, you can throw it away and literally pick it up two minutes later and you're back to working 100%. Okay. All right. Well, thank you. Well, you have a little demo that you wanted to, to give us today? Yeah, let me put some of this in motion. And, and again, for everybody out there, this is this should take less than two minutes. I'm probably talking about it more longer than it's gonna, <laughs> gonna actually take, but I think it really drives home the point. Um, and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna bring up on my screen uh, so you can see my uh, cell phone so that you can see that interaction between uh, a remote desktop. So let me just go ahead and I'm gonna share out my screen right now. 
and just share our screen number one. And I still like looking at you, Bill, but I'm going to minimize you here for a second. Yeah, I don't blame you. <laughs> uh, so I'm just going to open up a, uh, a small app that allows me to uh, have you uh, see what my phone is seeing right now. So I see you you use an Apple computer for your I do. connection to the web. I do, and and to tell you the truth, um, like many of the folks, um, you know, certainly the accounting firms, right? Not all of your applications work on a Mac, and you know we get this a lot. And 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 again, this is a way for you to leverage your um, sort of your agnostic hardware and allow you to log into. Um, you know, a virtual desktop that you know that is safe and secure for holding all of your clients' data. So at the end of the day, um, we use a program that's native to Windows called Microsoft um, uh, uh, Remote Desktop. Uh -huh. And literally, Remote Desktop is as simply as um, lo loading the application on your iPad or your Mac or your PC. And essentially, we double-click and basically through the security that we've pre-configured in the background, um, we automatically save your password. It goes through what is called a secure gateway. And then even after that, you still have to get an acknowledgement on your phone to say, yes, this is Jason Sheridan. He's with Thrive and he's using the DAS server. I click the button okay. And at the end of the day, it logs you in, verifies who you are, and um, we're on our way. At this stage of the game, what we're looking at here is a, uh, um, uh, a virtual desktop or desktop as a service. Okay. And from here, you are launching all of your normal day-to-day uh, -day applications that you're gonna have. Um, it's not the light version. It is the full version of all of your applications that you're used to using. So they act in the exact same way. Now I'm scaling it down for the demo here, but the reality is, is usually this comes in in a full screen mode. People right. don't even know that they're actually working on a remote desktop. Okay. So, um, again, just for folks that are out there, your servers that are on the network, um, at the end of the day, we replicate everything, right? We replicate right. your file and folder structure, your network drives so that you know, if you have, uh, again, most of our folks uh, that are with us in the MSATP or, you know, somewhere under 10 people, you have a couple people uh, within your practice, you can at least share the data uh, by creating your network drive structure the exact same way you would have it on a server. Mm -hmm. So the nice thing about this is there's really no training curve. If you're familiar with a Windows desktop, that's as, as hard as this is to get going. So okay. at the end of the day, um, again, like I said, you're just kind of logging in, you're accessing the data as you normally would. Um, you're working right. on spreadsheets that, you know, kind of you normally would. You're sitting right. back and quite frankly, it's, it's, it's literally that easy. Um, uh -huh. <laughs> you know, uh, it's sometimes funny, we try to use the Staples slogan, right? To, uh, they have the easy button. Right. right. This is sort of the easy button because Really, at the end of the day, as you saw me just log out there, um, it's a Windows desktop environment. Also, on top of that, if you are using your Windows remote desktop, you have a, an additional tab that's called Workspaces. So if I wanted to just open that document and not launch the full desktop, I could still just launch the application with inside Windows desktop. You'll notice my phone still gives me an acknowledgement about who's logging onto the system. And at the end of the day, there is the exact same document that we have. Um, wow. Uh, That's a neat feature. Now, really is, that is. Only, is that only on the Apple or is that on the... It is not. It is available, again, through the native Microsoft remote desktop application. So okay. we can put this on your iPad. We can put it on your Mac. We can put it on your PC. And what you just saw me do right there is open a document a single right. document that's sitting in my nice, safe and secure data center. And um, that data that you were looking at wasn't being transferred from, you know, essentially my laptop to the data center. I was simply accessing it in the data center through gotcha. the secure channels. 
Okay. Super nice, super convenient. Yeah, that is nice. Yeah. Um, you know, I, I know that you know, but just to let our, um, our viewers know, I've been uh, using the cloud now for about, I don't know, it's about 10 years. Right. Uh, and I think it's the greatest thing since sliced bread because, uh, you know, in the, the pandemic, they said, you got to close your offices down. Literally, my staff, all they had to do was pick up their laptops and take them home, and they were back up and running within an hour. Um, yeah. Yeah, the, so yeah, I was just going to say that, that that's a great example. And, and Bill, we, we hear this echoed for several people, I think, within your community that uh, for a long time, you know, maybe, and not just your community, I, I shouldn't say, you know, we deal a lot with insurance companies, we deal a lot with law firms, and, you know, that sort of that mentality of having servers in your office and remote and VPNing and firewalling and, you know, that's a lot of work for a small five person accounting firm to be able to monitor, manage, maintain and upgrade. Um, you know, all of those things become very cumbersome. And, you know, at the end of the day, it's, it's really nice to have a system like this in place where if you're going to have one of your clients that audit you and say, hey, Bill, what are you doing with my data? Where is it? What, how is it being secured? You know, in this type of environment, can you replicate that on your own? Probably not. Uh, if, if you can replicate it on your own, it's pretty costly, as opposed to you being able to say, actually, yeah, you know what? Um, I'm multi-factor authenticated all of your data. It's encrypted both in transit and at rest, and it lives in this data center. And oh, by the way, here's this data center certificate uh, that's basically saying that I adhere to these standards. So that's a, that's a big, powerful message to have, not only for you, but certainly a safety blanket for your clients. Sure. Um, <clears throat> you know, and I don't want it to just be all about cost and things like that, but is the cost of the cloud comparable to the cost of doing the server and the, and the terminals and the VPNs and all that kind of stuff? You know, I mean, Hey. I'm not talking about $50 one way or another, yeah. but is it like a, a comparable cost? It really is. And um, I think it's, it's um, again, one of those things where we coach people and you guys, okay, full disclosure, about 15 years ago, accounting firms are the folks that kind of pushed us in this direction, right? They said that they just don't want to manage those servers anymore. And I had the fortunate, um, um, I was really fortunate back then to work with a lot of people that were better with math than I was. And what we typically do in a firm uh, is we look at if you're gonna buy a server, if you're gonna buy a firewall, if you're gonna have a backup, and if you're gonna have disaster recovery, you're gonna have a work from home plan and you're gonna secure it, maintain it and do all that stuff. What we do is we add all of that, we look at the cloud, we put them side by side, and we look at it over a three to five year period. And when we look at that over a three to five year period, what we generally find is that the prices are very similar. In a lot of cases, you, you could make the argument that, hey, at a five person accounting firm, I'm gonna pay more. Absolutely true. What you can't dispute though is that by moving into the cloud, you are gonna have those safety measures in place that you can't replicate on your own. And I think for your industry, um, you know, that's really the value that's, that's you know, sometimes hidden, that you're getting these check boxes checked off. Um, also a big in your community, um, when we go through mergers and acquisitions, you know, right now we have several members that um, are gonna maybe transition maybe retire and move on, sell their firms. Uh, again, being able to turn over the keys to the castle to a new firm to say, hey, all of our data, all of our clients' data is in a safe, secure environment. And oh, by the way, we can create you an account, call us, we'll turn you on and you can have instant access. Trust me, it's a great value add to be able to highlight your own organization to be able to kind of move through that transition. Sure. Well, we're going to have to start wrapping things up here, but why don't you give uh, the folks a little bit of information on how they can get in touch with Thrive? Sure. No, um, um, hey, uh, you know, a, a lot of you guys 
and Gail's out there. Um, you know, we've really enjoyed working with your community. Um, you can find us at thrivenextgen.com uh, or just go to thrivenetworks.com. Um, even if for, for some of you folks that have been around for a while with us, even if you went to eastech.com, you'd still get to Thrive's website. Um, you know, you can find us there. And, um, you know, really through the MSATP, um, you know, I think our, 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 our link is on your website as well. Uh, we always encourage people to um, reach out when they're thinking about replacing servers. Anytime that you're replacing a server, it's probably worth a phone call. Um, and at least, you know, we can very quickly, um, if you're under 10 people, we can turn, give you an idea of what this costs and then you have more information to probably make a more informed decision. So um, I would say those two ways to get in touch with us, um, either way is fine and uh, I would love to help. Okay. Well, thank you very much, Jason. Thanks for joining us today. Yeah, no problem. Thanks for having me. Appreciate it.